So if I was to delete one character of this invite code and choose to register this account, you'll see that my error message has been displayed because that was an invalid invite code. But if I was to add that character back on and now choose to register this account, the successful workflow will run and it will not only create an account within our database, but it's now going to generate a new invite code for us and send us through to our settings page here. Hello, my name is Lachlan Kirkwood and today I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about building an invite code experience within your Bubble application. An invite only experience allows us to generate a unique invite code that can be sent to a user, which they can pass on to someone else in order to successfully register an account within your application. Invite codes are of course a popular feature within applications like Clubhouse and Dribbble. And in my opinion, they're actually a great way to increase the growth of your application as they just help create some exclusivity around who can actually register an account. Let's open up a bubble editor and I can start walking you through all of the steps you need to know in order to create your own invite only experience. So over in our bubble editor, when it comes to creating an invite code experience, the first feature I'd like to build is just a registration page with an input field that allows us to process an invite code. But before I walk us through the process of building out the workflows to power this page, I'd just like to show you a quick preview at how I've structured my database to actually allow us to process this invite code feature. And so if I jump over into my data tab here, you'll see that I have two data types currently within my application. One is a user in which I'm just storing some information about the user's name and something like a profile photo. By all means, if you're storing any additional information about users in your application, you're more than likely to have a series of data fields here. And then separately from this, I have another data type called invite code. So every time a user registers an account, I'm going to be creating an invite code in my database. And by default, you'll see here that this invite code will be linked to a creator. So this is the user who actually creates this code in our database. And then I've added an additional data field called code string, which is just a text field type. And that's going to be the actual invite code itself. So whether that be numbers, text, or special characters, I'm just going to be storing that as a text field type. And so if we now jump to our registration page, you'll see that I've just created a sample form here on our page that allows a user to register an account. So I'm just storing things like the user's name, the email, their password. But you'll also see that I have a separate field here to register an invite code. And then below this, I've also just added in an alert message to display an error if a user goes to register an account and the invite code they've added is not valid. And so in order to create a functional invite code experience, the first thing we're going to do is register a user's account based on the invite code value within this field. And then once a user registers an account with a valid code, we're going to then generate an invite code for that user that they can then pass on to someone else. And so in order to do that, I'm going to select our register button here, and I'm going to choose to start a new workflow every single time this is clicked. And before I actually build out this workflow, what I'm going to need to do is create a condition onto this workflow that only allows this to run if the value of the input code added into this field is valid. And the way I'll be determining that is by referencing the input codes within our database. So if I jump back into our workflow editor, what I'm going to do is add a condition that performs a search through our database for all of our invite codes that have been created. And if that search retrieves a valid invite code, it will allow the rest of the workflow to run. So we'll be signing the user up and then redirecting them through to a settings page. And then in a moment, I'll be creating another workflow that registers if the invite code is not valid within our database, in which case I'll be displaying that error message on my page. And so the way we can add that condition is by performing a search through our database for all of the invite codes where the code string, so this is the characters of the invite code, where the code string equals the same value 
as the input invite code on my page. So that's just the input field where I'm allowing the user to add in an invite code. And then if an invite code stored in our database matches the same value as the invite code in our input form, I'd like to of course allow this workflow to run. And so I'll just need to perform a count of how many of these matched instances are in our database. So after I performed a search for the valid invite code, I'd like to perform a count on this. And if Bubble has in fact identified that there is an invite code in our database that matches the same value as the input field, I'm gonna need to recognize if there's more than zero instances of that occurring within our database. And this just essentially means, as I'd mentioned before, that there is in fact a valid invite code in our database that matches the same value as that input field. And so from here, what we're gonna to need to do is build out the workflow that will power the user registration feature. So within this, the first step I'd like to do is select from the account tab and choose to sign the user up. And this will just be the same as any other registration workflow you've ever created. So we'll match the email of this user to be the input email field. And for the password, I want this to be the value of my input password field. And then after I've registered the user's account within our database, I'd like to add an additional step. And within this step, I actually want to delete the invite code from our database that the user has just used. Because once this invite code has actually been used once, I don't want any other users to be able to make use of that again. So in this case, it's going to be a one-time invite code. Of course, if you'd like one invite code to be valid for as many uses as you would like, you won't need to include this step. You just keep that invite code within your database. But I'm gonna show you how we can delete that invite code. So if we head to our data tab here, we'll choose to delete a thing. The thing we will delete is gonna be an invite code. So we'll need to perform a search in our database for an invite code, where once again, the code string equals the same value as our input invite code field. And then I'm just gonna be deleting the very first item in our database because there will in fact only be one invite where the code string equals the value of our input field. And so now that invite code that the user is currently using will no longer be valid to anyone else. But of course from here, what I would now like to do is add an additional step to our workflow that generates a new invite code for this user to pass on to someone else. And so because our invite codes are stored within our database, we're going to once again head to our data tab. We'll choose to create a new thing. The thing I wanna create is an invite code. And now within our invite code, we'll just need to register the actual code string. So the characters that will be formed within the invite code itself. So I'm gonna select that the code string will need to equal a unique value. And now the way you can generate random characters within Bubble is by typing in the word calculate, and you'll see an option here to calculate a formula. For our formula type, we're just gonna choose to generate a random string of numbers. And then you can add in how many characters you would like this random string to be. In my instance, I'm just going to manually type in the number 20. So this is gonna be 20 characters long. And of course, from here, I can choose what type of characters will fill in this string. So I can say to use letters, use non-capitalized letters as well, and then also include numbers and even special characters if I would like. I can then close that. And now that is how we can allow a new invite code to be generated for the person who's just registered an account. And then the very last step I'd like to add into this workflow is just a way to redirect this user through to a settings page where they can not only update the details within their account, but also view the new invite code that we have just created for them in case they'd like to send that through to someone else. And so I'm just going to add one last step in my workflow, choose from a navigation event, select the go to page option and set the destination page to be my settings page I have in my application. And that's all I'll need to create for this workflow here. What I am gonna do is just choose from our workflow trigger here and update the event color to be green just to signify that this is the workflow that actually does allow a user to create an account. Because as I mentioned before, I'm also gonna need to create a separate workflow that registers if the invite code here is not valid, in which case I would like to display this alert message that I've added onto the page. 
And the process of creating that workflow is actually pretty straightforward. What I'm gonna do is jump over to my workflow tab. I'm actually going to copy our existing workflow. I'll paste that in. And the first thing I'll do is just update the event color of this workflow to be red, because this is the workflow that's going to trigger our error message. And then the first thing I'll need to change within this workflow is the condition on our trigger here. So if we're performing a search through our database for an invite code, and if the value of the input field on our page does not match an active invite code in our database, I would like this workflow to run and display my error message. And so in order to do that, I'm just gonna need to update the count that I'm adding at the end of this condition. I'm just going to remove the is greater than zero option. And I'll just be selecting from the option is, and then I'll be typing in the number zero. And that just essentially means that if the value of the input field does not match the value of a code string in our database, this workflow will run. So I'm just gonna to choose to close that. And now within our workflow, I can just delete all of the steps that we'd created in our previous workflow that we duplicated because I'm only just gonna to need to add one step in this workflow and that is to display our alert message. So I'm just gonna scroll on down to our element actions, choose to display our alert message. And by default, I only have one alert message on the page. So it's going to display that error message. And that is all we'll need to do when it comes to actually creating the registration process through an invite code. What I'd like to do now though, is just show you how we can display this invite code to a user on a settings page within our application. And so over on this settings page that I've created for our tutorial today, I once again just have some sample input fields that I've added onto the page. And one thing you'll notice once again is that I've added in an input field here for an invite code. And I've actually grouped this together with the text element above it there. And the reason I've done that is because I'd like to actually hide this group if the user has in fact given their invite code to someone else and it's been used because I just don't want it to be displayed then. And so if I double click on this, you'll see that I have a group here called group invite code, and we'll be adding a condition to this in a moment. But what I'd first like to do is just double click on our input field here and display the invite code that we had generated for this user when they registered an account. And so under our initial content field here, I'm going to insert dynamic data and perform a search through our database for all of the invite codes where the person who created this, so the created by field, where the value of that equals the current user. So that is the person logged in currently viewing their settings page. And of course, because only one invite code has been generated for one user, I'm then just going to select the very first item in our database, which is also the only item. And then I'll be displaying the code string that we had stored for that invite code. And now that will display within our input field. The last thing I'd like to do though, is just add a condition to our group here that either hides or displays this depending on if this invite code has been used for someone else or not. And so what I'm gonna do is click on my group that my heading and my input field sit within. And as you can see, the first thing I'd actually done within this group is unselected that this element is visible on page load. So by default, that is normally ticked within bubble. What I would like to do though is unselect that because I'll be creating a condition that chooses when this should be displayed or not. I'd also just like to tick this option here to collapse this element's height when it's hidden, meaning that if the invite code has been used and this group is no longer being displayed, I'd like our element below this, which is our button to move up accordingly. And now on this group, I'll just need to create a condition to identify when this should be displayed to a user or not. So I'm going to head over to our conditional tab and define a new condition. And once again, for our condition, I'm just gonna be performing a search through our database to see if there is in fact an existing invite code that has been created by the current user. And if there has, I'll just be selecting that this element should be visible. So I'm going to define a condition and perform a search in our database through our invite codes and just identify if there's been an invite code created by the current user. And when the count of the invite codes that have been created by the current user is greater than zero, meaning there is at least one code in our database, 
I would like to select that this element is visible and then tick that that is true. And now if you remember when a user passes their invite code onto someone else and that person then registers an account, in our workflow, we were first of all deleting that invite code. So in this case, the invite code created by our first user is going to be deleted, meaning that the count of those codes is zero, resulting in this field being hidden. And that's actually all we'll need to create for our invite code feature today. What I would just like to do is head over into our bubble development environment and show you a quick preview as to how this all functions. But before we do that, what we will need to do is generate our very first invite code by ourselves, which we can then pass on to another user. And so in order to do that, I'm going to head over to our data tab and under our invite code data type, I'm going to head to our app data field here. I'm going to open up all of our invite codes and you'll see that this is currently empty because we haven't generated any codes. But what I'll then do is choose to add a new entry in our database. And I'm just going to add in my own custom invite code. I'm just going to call this test invite code one, two, three, four, five. I can just see I have a space there. I'm going to fix that up. I will then also just copy that invite code and choose to create that entry in our database. And now I will head over to my registration page and preview how that functions. Over on my registration page, I'm just going to start by adding in some information to my fields. I'm going to call myself test user, add a test email address as well as a sample password. And then when it comes to my invite code here, I'm just going to paste in the invite code that I had previously created in my database. And what I'd first like to show you is how we can process an invalid invite code. So if I was to delete one character of this invite code and choose to register this account, you'll see that my error message has been displayed because that was an invalid invite code. But if I was to add that character back on and now choose to register this account, the successful workflow will run and it will not only create an account within our database, but it's now going to generate a new invite code for us and send us through to our settings page here in which you can now see in our invite code field here, I have a new code that's been generated for my account. If I was to copy that and send that through to someone else, they can of course use that to register an account. And so over in a separate window here, I'm just going to register a new account with that code. I'm going to call this person test user two test to gmail.com. I'll just add in a small password. And then for our invite code field, I'm going to paste in the new code that was generated in our database. I will register this account and that workflow will run and it will now create their account within our database. And once again, register a new invite code for them. And just like that, we've created our own invite only experience today. If you'd like to keep up with any other bubble tutorials or guides that I share, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. So that way you'll be the first to know when I drop a new bubble tutorial. Until then, I wish you all the best on your own no-code journey.